Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 517. Why don't the experts believe that testosterone is a necessary female hormone? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moppin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health, and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moppin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Five years ago, Dr. Moffin and I wrote a book called The Secret Female Hormone. We titled it that because at that time, many, many women and their doctors were concerned about hormone replacement strategies. They were concerned because of the fear of breast cancer, and they were concerned because of the issue of if you give women a male, quote, hormone, what will it do to them? Will it masculinize them? Will it impact them in in ways that are discomforting for them or their partners. And so we wrote a book to explain that testosterone is actually a female hormone. And that book has gotten some notoriety and and people have been buying it and and coming to practices like BioBalance Health to get testosterone for women. But there still are disagreements among physicians about the validity of that and the importance of that. So this week we're going to be talking about testosterone as an androgen and other androgens in the impact that and the impact that they have on women as they age. Um, so let's start with talking about what are androgens as, as an encompassing group and then testosterone as a subset. So androgens are a, a group of hormones that are made both by the adrenal gland and the testicles and ovaries in people. Mm-hmm. So it's a it's a large group of hormones. And testosterone is one of those hormones. Okay. But it is not the same as all of the hormones. The other hormones that we separate from testosterone are made in the adrenal gland. They have their their adrenal kind of male acting hormones. But they aren't testosterone and they do not have the good effects of testosterone. They are they are the hormones that young men shouldn't but do take called anabolic steroids. That's that's what that word means. Anabolic meaning steroids meaning adrenal steroids. That's generally what they take. And what that does is you take them, even though you're making them, it shuts down your own production of all the hormones in the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland is key to fight or flight to the water balance in your body. It's, it's key to life. You have to have your adrenal glands to actually live. Mm-hmm. And if your adrenal glands are, God forbid, removed or uh, diseased and you have to have, and you have lower levels of adrenal glands, uh, of adrenal hormones, that is not good, but the male-like hormones from that, that gland, they are not the same as testosterone. Testosterone is pure testosterone, and it is generally made in, in the testicles and the ovaries of human beings. I, I'll say one more thing. Your dog <laughs> makes testosterone in its adrenal glands, but we don't. So if you wonder why your dog can be neutered, and, uh, or, or um, that's it, neutered. <laughs> I'm not a vet. <laughs> then that's why, because... They make pure testosterone in their adrenal glands, so that's okay. But we can't. Mm-hmm. We can't. We can't lose all of our testosterone and still remain normal. Yeah. So that's the difference. Testosterone so, is more specific, and it is actually a beneficial hormone. One that keeps us young. One that keeps us virile. One that keeps our sex drive going. Whereas adrenal hormones do not have the same healthy good effects. So the testosterone from the testes is the testosterone that we identify with masculinity. Yes. And 
it's in the culture. It's not just science. It's in the culture. Mm -hmm. I, I remember several years back, my wife and I had two adult French males living with us <laughs> for six months. Mm -hmm. And she would and teenage, it, right? Uh, they were l l early twenties, okay. finishing college. Mm -hmm. They were they were here for their senior year project uh, from university. You were their project. <laughs> I was their project. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she would come in the house, and, and we would get into the three guys would get into picking at each other and fussing at each other, or teasing each other, whatever we were doing. And she would come in the house, and she'd stop, and she'd take a deep breath, and she'd say. Ah, the testosterone, mm -hmm. meaning here are three males who ought to know better, but they're acting like idiots, and it's a man thing. Uh, that may or may not be. That's not what we're talking about. That's not the kind <laughs> of male identification that we're talking about. We're talking about the sex drive, the sexuality, the sensuality, the desire for sex, the ability to function sexually is driven by testosterone. In both men in both and women. Men and women. In fact, women make three times the testosterone that they do estrogen. Right. And I didn't know that until I started working with you. I didn't know that women made testosterone at all until I started mm -hmm. working with you. And you were working with me to explain to me why so many women who reach middle age or who go through menopause mm -hmm. begin to lose sexuality, mm -hmm. the desire for sex, the ability to be sexual, the ability to be comfortable being sexual in terms of vaginal dryness mm -hmm. and pain and mm -hmm. uh, orgasms, those kinds of issues. Your theory was they don't have any testosterone. Other gynecologists and other endocrinologists that, that, that women would go to mm -hmm. and At say, that time. something's wrong. They'd say, no, it's all in your head. There's nothing wrong. Right. I've checked you out. There's nothing wrong. So it's probably in your relationship. Lazy, fat, or crazy, or there's something wrong with you and your husband. Right. There's something wrong so between you and your that, partner. That, those were the but, – but that part of this is mislabeling by a culture. By, by society, Western society labels testosterone is for men only. Mm -hmm. They use the word testosterone to define some of the characteristics of males, which may or may not be due to testosterone. You know, they're angry. They throw something at the wall. That's not testosterone. That is their brain, and their brains are different than, than women's brains, and they develop differently. And it may or may not have been under the influence of testosterone and estrogen more in women. We have more estrogen than men, and they have more testosterone than we do, but we both have both hormones. But it doesn't mean that that guy's got a high testosterone because he's putting his hand through the wall. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not the same thing. Right. So we've used a lot of misnomers when we describe things associated with men and women. And men are from Mars, women are from Venus, but Mars and Venus have a lot of things that physiologically, chemically are the same. Yes. Part of why we do it, we look different, is that our receptor sites, genetically in our bodies, in every cell, respond to these hormones differently. And that's genetic. So the difference between men and women, we both have testosterone flowing through our bloodstream. Mm -hmm. Our bodies are different. Our receptor sites at various locations where we need that hormone to be activated and used mm -hmm. are different. They Once they get the hormone, the cell itself acts differently in a man than it does in a woman. Okay. That's a genetic difference. So in looking at scientific research, doctors do an interesting thing. They use multiple words for the same thing. And they use what I think are... Confusing. Let me, let me say this differently. I <laughs> struggle with being able to differentiate among some of these terms. And in the research that we did for today, there are two terms that I keep getting mixed up because I, I'm limited in my capacity. And because they're confusing. <laughs> well, the, the terms are hyperandrogenism and hypoandrogenism. Mm -hmm. And I, you've explained it to me a hundred times... This one means this, and this one means that. But I still get them mixed up. So Hi will you do it again, please? <laughs> Wind me up. Um, Hyperandrogenism is too much of male-like hormones in general. That's all the male-like hormones. Among which is testosterone, but okay. it's not all of them. Right. Okay. And when they say, when doctors say androgen, 
they they use it interchangeably, testosterone and the adrenal and, and the adrenal and, androgens. They act like they're the same thing, and they have completely different actions mm -hmm. and completely different outcomes in your body. So. I don't do that. I call testosterone, testosterone, and adrenal androgens, adrenal androgens. When they say hyperandrogenism, that means too much of any of those hormones. And most of the time we're thinking the, the, out, the things we're looking at, the symptoms, are too much of the adrenal hormone. Like polycystic ovarian disease for women, they say they have a lot of male hormone. Well, they have a lot of their own hormone, but but it's testosterone. When we ch check the testosterone level on PCO patients, it's not high. When we check their adrenal androgens, that's high. Mm -hmm. That's what we should be attending to, not to shut down their testosterone, but to actually shut down some of the adrenal overactivity. So hyper... Is too much. Is too much. Hypo. Hypo is too little. Too little. So let's talk about the from the Journal of Fertility and, and sterility. sterility. That's one of the big journals for OBGYNs. Is it? Mm -hmm. So androgen insufficiency, not having enough androgens, mm -hmm. results in these characteristics. So if a woman is suffering from a hypo androgenism, mm -hmm. too hypo. few mm -hmm. androgens in her system. Mm -hmm. She will suffer a reduced sexual motivation. She just won't feel desire. It just won't be there. It won't occur to her like, oh, I could have sex. You know, right. It's not going to happen. It'll be, she's not. Or, oh, that's interesting. That guy's interesting. Yeah. Or he's handsome. Or looking at, um, I mean, she's not going to have fantasy. She's not going to be thinking about, oh, planning to have sex. Right. Like, when I go home, I want to. Jump on my husband. Okay. Yeah. You know, that's not going to come across her mind without, <laughs> I saw without this, testosterone. I saw this new diamond ring at the store, and when I go home, I'm going to work for it. You know, you have a really bad vision of what women do, because I would, that... I spent a lot you, of years as a counselor. That, that offends me. Yeah, I, I would I never can, do that. I can I appreciate that. I would never that. do that. Of course you wouldn't. <laughs> of course you would that. No, I'm so, well, <laughs> I, I can't win this argument. <laughs> So okay. we're talking about reduced sexual motivation, sexual fantasy, sexual enjoyment, sexual arousal. All of that responsiveness and desire just fades away, and they don't have it if they're hypoandrogenous. And, but what that really means is hypotestosterone. That means their ovary is no longer making testosterone right. or it's too low. And the, the adrenals continue to make uh, androgens throughout our lives— but the ovary in women mm -hmm. stop making testosterone at, at, at menopause or before. It go, becomes very low after 40. But at, at 50, and when menopause starts, it's gone. So the adrenal continues to make the hormones that are called androgens, mm -hmm. but the ovary just stops. That's when we see the changes. Okay. We see the changes when testosterone alone goes down. And when women get tired, they get fat. They're miserable, depressed. So many people go on antidepressants when they're <coughs> in their 40s. They get autoimmune diseases. They start getting arrhythmias and heart problems. They, um, they are aching all over. They have joint pain. They, they have diseases like diabetes starts. All of these things have to do with a drop of testosterone to a critical point where their body stops functioning normally. So in addition to those sexual symptoms mm -hmm. that we talk about, mm -hmm. uh, vaginal vasocongestion, that means, what is that? That means that um, just like with men, with men, men Blood get flow a, in the penis yeah, begins to be a problem for erections. Because yes. the vessels dilate. Women, uh, when they're stimulated, get swelling of the um, mons in the pubic area. Blood flows to that area which helps them with uh, lubrication, but also with sexual stimulation. It also is a sign that they're stimulated. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it goes back to, you know, caveman days and, and mammals mm -hmm. swell when they're, when they're stimulated. So okay. that doesn't happen if you don't have testosterone. Pubic hair, does that go away? Do they start losing that? Yeah, that, okay. the pubic hair goes away, but, also, but androgens from the adrenal play a part in that. Okay. But you can still have almost no pubic hair if your testosterone's gone. The androgens aren't strong enough from the adrenal to actually 
keep that going. So if you replace the testosterone, it comes back. It'll come back. Unless, of course, you remove it. Well, that's <laughs> but that's a cosmetic choice. Yeah, that's that's a, not a physiological right, function. Right. Okay. And that's same same with hair under your arms. Uh huh. No testosterone. Usually, that goes away. All right. Uh, bone mass, muscle mass, quality of life, mood, affect, energy. Mm -hmm. All of these things decline if you don't have enough testosterone along with the other androgens. Right, but it's mostly testosterone. But it's mostly testosterone for, for women. For women, because if you think about it, the, other, the, the androgens from the adrenal don't change. They stay the same as we get older. And, but the only thing that changes is our testosterone. So those changes go along with just testosterone. So in the article that we read in Fertility and Sterility, mm -hmm. they made a reference to a doctor named uh, Waxen, I lost his name, hang on, Waxenberg. Mm -hmm. In 1959, mm -hmm. Dr. Waxenberg identified testosterone as an essential part of this ability to be sexual and healthy as you age. As females age. As in, um, in females, and yes, females. In, within females. Mm -hmm. And so we knew it in 1950, I mean, research was there. Some doctors were aware of it, some saw it. But the but additional- I was never taught that. And I you mean, were in I medical was, school after 1959. Yeah. Yeah, I was well, well, I knew that, but I was, I was trained in 19, man. I was trained in the late 70s, uh -huh. and then I, was, I had my residency in the 80s. So no one told me that. I mean, I was never taught that. I, w I never, in all the journals I read, mm -hmm. it never had anything about testosterone in women. So to the experts in OBGYN, who are the, women, who are the women's doctors, mm -hmm. hormone doctors, or sex hormone doctors, we had no information about it. However, that doctor was an endocrinologist, I believe. Yes. And endocrinology knew all about it, but nobody talked to each other. Yeah. And that's a problem. That's, that's why you specialize. That, you yeah. learn a special language and you go talk to people that speak your language. But, but you should share information. Ideally, I mean, but, yeah. but the OBGYN journals, your doctor reads the green journal. That's the only journal they may read because they think it's got all the updated stuff. Well, they won't print anything that's, that's written by somebody other than an OBGYN. And if they don't believe this and they don't read other research mm -hmm. or they don't do their own, they're never, they're never going to get this part. And so women are going to not be treated properly uh, because their OBGYN doesn't get it, doesn't understand it, hasn't read the research. Now, they talk about too much. They talk about hyperandrogenism. <coughs> and I've dealt with hyper hyperandrogenism um, my whole career. And that usually presents as um, either young patients or... 20 something patients who come in and all of a sudden their whole body changes. They something turns on in their adrenal gland and they start making body hair all over. They have male pattern body hair, they have hair between their breasts, they have hair on their nipples, they have hair down the middle of their belly. Um, they also have balding. And this and is from too much androgen? androgen, but this is the adrenal androgen. The adrenal androgen. So, but we were trained that it was too much testosterone. We weren't trained that it was the adrenal that was the problem. We were trained that it was the ovary that was the problem. So there, in the article, there's a table, a list of androgen excess. Mm -hmm. If you have the too symptoms. much androgen as a woman, as you age, mm -hmm. you're going to have, suffer from... You can from, have it at young age, too. You suffer from issues with acne, alopecia, which is like your hair coming out in clumps. Uh-huh. Uh, Hirsutism, which is what you were just talking about, Facial getting hair and, and body, on, and around body over hair. your body. Mm -hmm. Menstrual disorders, infertility, insulin resistance, abnormal glucose tolerance, android obesity. Now, what is that? That's your belly. Like your arms and legs are the right size, but you've got a big belly. Your fat is in the abdomen. Now, I look at people and I say that's diabetes, fat. but that's a, not the apple shape. Or it's the, the same idea. I mean, usually belly fat leads to diabetes and heart disease, okay. but initially part of why you have that is a lot of estrone estrone comes from your adrenal gland so too much of that something called dyslipidemia dyslipidemia is high ldl cholesterol high triglycerides huh so the two bad lipids okay so that's very common in Lip, people lipid lipidemia that, right all right and what 
Uh, and so what else? Voice changes, clitoral changes, hypertension, and uh, frank virilization, which is excess, the perception of excess virility in a female. And vir we call virilization. I mean, we consider it like oily skin, acne, and facial hair. Okay. But it's not really becoming a man. It's just having some of these characteristics that men more symptoms. readily have. But when we give people pure testosterone, mm -hmm. the opposite happens. We give them pure testosterone, which you would, which has always been kind of equated as what they describe here. But we, when we give it to them, our patients don't get virilized. They don't get hair in the wrong places. They don't have alopecia. Mm -hmm. They don't. Their lipids don't go up. They come down. I mean, there's a few people that it it works backwards, but in general, lipids get better. Blood sugar gets better. Insulin resistance gets better, and they lose their belly. And their muscle fat. mass gets better because right. they can build muscles with and testosterone. And that means they can actually burn calories. Right. So when we're talking just testosterone, the the thing that they're lumping testosterone into the saying testosterone causes these things, it testosterone doesn't. When you when you make it yourself or when you get it back, and all I'm familiar with is pellet form and the and you know in the pellet form, non-oral form, those things don't happen. So they should be saying adrenal androgens and separating it so that we understand the difference. Separating out from testosterone and make that distinction. Because what we know, what your practice proves every day, what our book, The Secret Female Hormone, discusses is that if women have an adequate amount of testosterone, none of these negative things happen. Uh, go to our website, check out the documentation, buy a copy of the book. It's available on Amazon or you can get it directly from Dr. Moffin's office. Find out about the secret female hormone and why it really shouldn't be secret at all. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.